Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are talking about the interior of the skull along with its foramen, especially for the passage of the cranial nerves. For this, let's start with the description of the interior cranial fossa that is showing in its green color and a little bit of red color up to the anterior clinoid processes. Then you can see on the both sides of this uh, dorsum celli, tuberculum celli, these are the middle cranial fossa. Then you can see the major part colored with that of the pinkish or purple color along with the edges of the petrous part of the temporal bones are the posterior cranial fossa. Now, in the anterior cranial fossa, concentrate, this is the central cribriform plate of ethmoid bone. Now in this picture, my pencil is pointing towards the optic canal and uh, just the margins of these, uh, you can say, the greater wing of sphenoid, just below that, the superior orbital fissure is going to be entered into your orbit. Then you can see the darker rounded uh, blackish shade foramen, that is the foramen retendum. Then you can focus on the whitish oval shaped foramen, that is foramen avail, and uh, just lateral to it there is the foramen uh, spinosum. Then uh, you can see on the petrous part of the temporal bone, that is the opening of the internal acoustic meatus, and just medial to it, uh, showing the whitish area, is the internal jugular foramen. And then you can see on the both sides of the foramen magnum, the blackish uh, rounded uh, foramen is rather hypoglossal canal. Now through this uh, cribriform plate of athmoid bone, you must know that being the nose below it, so the olfactory nerve has to pass through it. Now again where my, uh, my uh, pencil is, the optic canal will uh, let the optic nerve to pass through and then through the superior orbital fissure the oculomotor the trochlear and the sixth abducent is supposed to pass now what about the fifth cranial nerve which is trigeminal as the name is showing something to be divided into three parts so it has got uh, ophthalmic division the maxillary division and the mandibular division First, the ophthalmic division has to pass through the superior orbital fissure. Then you are looking into the foramen rotundum. The maxillary division of the trigeminal is supposed to pass through it. Then comes the foramen ovale. The mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve is going to pass through it. Then you can see the internal acoustic meatus that will allow to the passage of the facial nerve and the vestibular cochlear nerve means 7th and 8th. Then the jugular foramen, uh, the whitish area or whitish hole like structure you can see, the 9th, 10th and 11th nerve means the glossopharyngeal vagus and the accessory nerve it's supposed to, they are supposed to pass through it. Then you can uh, see the hypoglossal canal meant for the passage of hypoglossal or 12th cranial nerve. This foramen magnum will allow the passage of the spinal part of the accessory nerve. Now a very good picture of the this inferior view of the brain you can see. Uh, let's revise the name of the nerves again. This uh, yellowish nerve on the very top you can see is the olfactory nerve or first cranial nerve. Then this bluish cutted nerve is the optic nerve cranial nerve number two that has to pass through the optic canal you remember then these are uh, on both sides you can see the yellow color of the nerve this is the oculomotor nerve and on the very edges coming dorsally the very cylinder thin nerve is the trochlear nerve and then the purple color thickest sort of nerve you are looking into this is the trigeminal nerve and uh, on the lower border of the pons 
you can see nerve that is the abducens nerves and then focus on the adjacent aspect of the medulla oblongata and at the junction of you can say the bones as well the upper green nerve is the facial nerve then you can see the bluish color nerve is the vestibular cochlear nerve then focus on that green nerve thick one upper one is the glossopharyngeal and then the rootlets are coming these are again of green color they are vagus nerve and then you can see the yellowish longer with so many rootlets this is the accessory nerve which is 11th cranial nerve and uh, the cutted nerve on the both sides of this uh, pyramids you would observe these are basically the hypoglossal nerves now look at to this this picture that is uh, showing again the brain and uh, the nerves and you are also looking into the nerve reaching towards their destination we will learn that uh, what are the function of these nerves and what happens as a result of the lesions of these individual nerves so let's start with the first nerve you can see the olfactory nerve or first cranial nerve is uh, touching your nose so uh, must perform the function of smell and uh, if there is a lesion of this nerve there could be the loss of sense of smell called anosmia now focus on the cranial nerve 2 the optic nerve you can see is touching your eye so it has to perform the function of sight or you can see with the help of it lesion will lead to visual field defects a uh, loss of light reflex along with the third cranial nerve and you know what this is the only nerve which is being affected affected by the multiple sclerosis now focus on the third cranial nerve with this uh, reddish marking and you know that these are concerned with the movements of the eyeball as they are supposed to supply the extracular muscles along with that it has to contribute in the contraction of your pupil accommodation and the proprioceptive information and if the lesion of oculomotor nerve occurs what happens diplopia external strabismus what strabismus is it is basically the involuntary or you would say the misalignment of the eye then there is a loss of parallel gaze and uh, ptosis dilated pupils loss of near response as well and the loss of light reflex along with the cranial nerve 2 now focus again on the cranial nerve 4 that is also going towards your eyeball it has to again deal with the movement of your eyeball because it supplies the superior oblique muscle and concerned with the proprioception what pri proprioception actually is it is the perception or awareness about the positioning and movement of your body part uh whatever the uh part of the body may be and if the lesion of the trochlear nerve occurs what happens there is weakness in looking down troubling going down stairs and especially the head tilts away from the lesion side now focus on the fifth cranial nerve which is trigeminal nerve you can see this nerve is touching towards your face so it has to deal with the movement of your mandible again proprioceptive then muscles of mastication are supposed to be supplied by it and uh, supply your face eye touch and pressure from skin and mucous membrane of the facial region is its contribution and then pain and temperature of the face is also perceived by this very cranial nerve so let's see that it has got three divisions so when the lesion of the trigeminal nerve occurs what happens uh when the its uh, ophthalmic division is uh, going to be involved there could be the loss of general sensation in skin of the forehead and the scalp and the loss of the blink reflex along with the cranial nerve 7 
and if the maxillary nerve is going to be uh, damaged what happens there will be loss of general sensation in the skin over the maxilla and the maxillary teeth and if mandibular nerve is going to be injured there could be the loss of general sensation in the skin over the mandible mandibular teeth tongue and weakness in chewing as well now look uh, into the sixth uh, cranial nerve which is the abducent nerve and uh, what it has to do it is concerned with the lateral movement of the eye because lateral rectus is the muscle being splined by it along with the proprioception and what happens if this abducent nerve or abducens is involved as being motor it can lead to diplopia and again the strabismus uh, loss of parallel gaze could be there it's a turn of the facial or seventh cranial nerve uh, what it does it is it has to deal with your facial expressions it elevates your heart bone concerned with the taste and tear two-third of the tongue is its territory it is secreto motor to submandibular and sublingual salivary glands and secreto motor to the lacrimal gland nasal gland etc and the pri proprioceptive information are also coming going through this cranial nerve seventh and if the lesion of this uh, seventh cranial nerve occurs what happens the corner of the mouth droops towards the lean side uh, you cannot close the eye cannot wrinkle your forehead loss of blink reflex hyperacosis and uh, bell's palsy which is the lesion of the nerve in the facial canal now focus on the eighth cranial nerve which you can very well see is uh, touching your ear so concern with the hearing and equilibrium of the head and uh, if this nerve is going to be injured or lesion leading to what there could be the sensory neural hearing loss and loss of balance and nystagmus occurs too now look into the ninth cranial nerve this ninth cranial nerve is uh, the glossopharyngeal nerve what it has to do concerned with the elevation of the larynx secretomotor to the parotid gland and concerned with the taste of the posterior one third of the tongue then the sensation from the mucous membrane of the pharynx and posterior one third of your tongue goes to its uh, 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 goes from its fiber to the dorsal nucleus of the vagus and the spinal nucleus of the fifth nerve the nuclei we have already learned and if this nerve is uh, injured you will uh, be showing the loss of gag reflex along with the 10th cranial nerve now focus on the 10th cranial nerve uh, along with you can add the cranial part of uh, accessory nerve what happens the movement of the palate pharynx and larynx are concerned and it is motor and secretomotor to the bronchial tree gut and inhibitory uh, sensation goes to your heart uh, sensations from viscera's and taste from the posterior most part of tongue and epiglottis uh, is supposed to come through this nerve and uh, if the lesion of the vagus nerve occurs so what happens the nasal speech is there nasal twang you would say nasal regurgitation could be there dysphagia your palate droops and the uvula pointing away from affected side and you expect the hoarseness in your voice along with the fixed vocal cord and uh, the loss of gag reflex along with the ninth cranial nerve and even the loss of cuff reflexes also there now focus on the 11th uh, cranial nerve the spinal part you would say is going towards your neck muscles and uh, you can see the uh, sensations from the skin of the external ear go to the spinal nucleus of uh, fifth nerve from it and then uh, sternocle uh, the sternocleidomastoid muscle you can see and the trapezius are the territory of this very nerve so when it uh, is going to be injured you expect weakness in turning chin to the opposite side and the shoulder droops
Now kindly concentrate on the 12th cranial nerve, the hypoglossal nerve. Uh, that has to deal with the movement of your tongue and uh, concern with the proprioception. So you know about the positioning and uh, location. All the proprioceptive information will lead towards your brain through this hypoglossal nerve regarding your tongue. So if the lesion of this hypoglossal nerve occurs, tongue pointing towards the same or affected side when you ask patient for protrusion and uh, after all this detail a uh, few tips or to learn what happens that uh, just remember if the fifth and twelfth cranial nerve are involved their lesion causes the jaw and the tongue respectively uh, they will shift towards the lesion side or affected side and uh, in case of cranial nerve 4, 7, 10th and 11th uh, the affected organ will move away from the lesion side. This is all regarding this topic.